Hello, welcome back to Guidance e Education channel. In this video, we are going to talk about colloids in daily life. Colloids have a very important role in our daily life. But before we continue with this video, please watch the video completely so that you get all points cleared. And if you think that the video is useful, like the video and share it with your friends who may also be benefited. Please subscribe the channel. It will be a great motivation for the channel. And also press the bell button so that you get informed as soon as videos are posted. Thank you very much. Now let us see the video. Here I have prepared a chart which shows a few important roles played by colloids in our daily life. First one I have noted here about food. Most of the food that we consume are colloids. Examples are milk, cream, ice creams, butter, etc. The next example I have noted here is fog, mist and rain. These three are manifestations of the colloidal nature of air. Large mass of air get cooled below dew point and moisture from air condenses on the surface of dust particles forming fine droplets. These droplets are colloidal in nature. They continue to float in air and form mist or fog. What is the difference between mist and fog? Fog is denser than mist. So, mist is lighter. Fog being denser settles on mountain tops or even on plains. It causes great hindrance during driving in hilly areas. Mist being lighter continues to float in the upper layers of the air. It is all due to the condensation of water vapor on dust particles. If there is to be rain, there has to be cloud. Cloud is nothing but aerosols. They have small water droplets in air. Due to the continued condensation, the droplets of water grow larger and start pouring down as rain. Artificial rains are caused by spraying electrified sand or any oppositely charged soil from aeroplane on the air. Let us see another phenomenon. The sky appears blue in color. What is the reason for the blue color of sky? The reason is the dust particles and water in air scatter blue wavelength of light more than any other wavelength in white light. And so the sky appears blue. The scattering is due to the dust particles and water in air and these particles are of colloidal size. Now, let us see the relation between river deltas and colloid. River deltas are formed at the junctions where river meets the sea. River water is nothing but a colloid of clay in water and these clay particles are charged. Sea water behaves like an electrolyte. When the electrolyte comes in contact with the colloidal particles in the river water, the clay particles get deposited in the form of wetland. This is how deltas are formed. Deltas are wetland. This is different from estuaries. Estuaries are actually tidal river mouths at the meeting of the sea. So, delta and estuaries are different. Estuaries, it is mainly water. In deltas, it is wet land. So, that is a that is a difference. Now, soil. Fertile soil is a colloid. The humus present in soil 
forms a protective colloidal layer over the fertile soil particles and this colloidal nature helps soil to absorb water and nutrients to it. This is what helps plants to get nutrients and water. Another very important role of colloids in daily life is clotting of blood. When blood oozes from a wound, blood clots. This is because particles in the blood get coagulated to form the clot. This clotting of blood is really helpful in checking the loss of blood from the body. Okay. Now, let us see applications of colloids. Colloids have great applications in daily life. We will discuss certain situations where the colloidal properties of certain substances are made use of. The first one is smoke precipitator which is otherwise called cotrel precipitator. It is a device used to remove impurities from smoke. Factories expel lot of effluents which contain a large number of impurities like carbon, dust, arsenic compounds and many other substances. These impurities when expelled out of the factory through the chimney will cause atmospheric pollution which might lead to health hazards. So, before expelling these waste from chimneys, the smoke is passed through the smoke precipitator. Smoke is a colloid of several charged particles. I have already prepared a diagram of the smoke precipitator. Let us see the parts of this precipitator. It is a chamber which has one inlet and one outlet. A metallic rod with a plate is provided inside the chamber through which high voltage is supplied. Under high voltage, this plate will develop charge. The smoke is first passed into this chamber and high voltage is supplied. The charged particles in the smoke will be attracted by the charge developed on the plate attached to this metallic rod whereby these particles will be deposited as impurities. The smoke travels up and in the meantime, the particles are removed, which can be then sent out through the chimney. The next application is purification of drinking water. Drinking water can be purified by using alum. Alum is a double salt of aluminium. It is a hydrated salt. The general formula can be written as XAL sulfate 12H2O. X is generally potassium. We call it potash alum. When water is passed over this, all the impurities get adsorbed on the surface of this potash alum and the impurities get removed. A large number of industrial products are colloids. Say for example, paints, ink, synthetic plastics, cement, graphite used as lubricants. We have already discussed the cleansing action of soap and detergents. The concentration of soap or detergent should be above critical missile concentration. Then only the colloidal nature can be attained. Many medicines that we use are colloids. One example is milk of magnesia. Photographic plates and films are coated with a colloidal solution of silver bromide coagulation of which helps in photography but these days photography is digital okay now it finds use in rubber industry latex is the material collected from the particular tree and this latex is subject to coagulation using suitable coagulating agents and after coagulation we get what is rubber tanning of leather animal hide 
animal hide has to be processed before it is put to any commercial purpose when it is processed we call it leather what is this hide it is skin of large animals leather is used for making shoes handbags purses belts and such other things this animal hide contains particles attached to it when it is removed from the body of the animal it is positively charged particles that is getting attached to it now during processing of this animal hide which you call tanning of leather a substance called tannin is added tannin is an organic substance obtained from the bark of trees and it is negatively charged when hide is treated with tannin the positive and negative charges it undergoes mutual coagulation anyway the hide gets cleaned becomes hard we call it leather so this process is called tanning of leather it is great commercial importance so we have seen some eight applications of colloids hope you were able to understand these points we have completed the discussion on the chapter surface chemistry i will come with another chapter thank you